All right, so you're a Photoshop user. You've been using Photoshop for a while and all of a sudden now you have access to Lightroom. What do you do with it? Is it just bridge or can you do other things? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, there's a lot of things you can do. It's really gonna speed up your workflow and it's gonna help you find, locate, and work with your photos so much faster than before. You're gonna love it. Jump on in and have a look and see what you can do. So why would a Photoshop user who has Bridge and has Camera Raw, why would you wanna use Lightroom? Well, apart from all the benefits that Lightroom has over Bridge, which I explained in a different video, about managing our files here inside a catalog, having everything in one place. Like right now, I've got 50,000 images, literally, as you can see here, that I'm working at inside this one catalog. I can do a number of adjustment things that I can do in here that I can't necessarily do inside of um, Camera Raw. And the real advantage comes to working with multiple photos and a lot of photos at once. Say, for example, I have this one photo. And I want to do some adjustments to it. Or let, let's look at another one. Let's just scroll down, find another photo here. Um, let's grab this one. And I want to experiment with this. I want to make a couple of different copies to this photo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose create virtual copy. And what that's going to do is it's going to make a copy of it. Notice that that little shows a little dog ear on the bottom. And that's because it didn't make a new photo and double the file size. What it did is it just simply created a reference to that photo that I can apply a clean set of metadata to. So I can do all my own adjustments and whatever I want to this photo without affecting the original. So let's do some more. And here's a keyboard shortcut. Hit the control or the command apostrophe key. So when I do that, now I've got another copy. So I've got two virtual copies here. So I've got my original and two virtual copies. Well, the advantage of this is if I go in here, I can do different things to this photo. What if I want to apply a preset? So let's have a look. I'm going to choose a develop module and I'm going to scroll up to the top here and here's all these presets. And one of the great things about a preset is I can just roll over it and I can see in this preview up here exactly what it's going to look like. So here's some black and white ones that come with Lightroom different types of presets and to apply them we simply click and it'll apply that preset to that photograph you know we can look at different ones here maybe that one you know and um, once again you know I can even create my own so these are a lot of presets here that I made myself let's uh, try this one just for fun and you can see you know we got all these different looks so that's the photo here we can see it's copy one there's the original, unaffected. There's a copy one. Well, let's grab the copy two. And why don't we try something else? Um, let's try this one here. So we're going to apply this preset. And notice that we're able to start experimenting now on copies of the photo. Now, the good thing about the preset is if there's something in here that we really don't like, like the vignettes a little much, we can just go back and we can tweak that later. Because everything that happens inside of Lightroom is non-destructive. And everything that happens, it happens on screen right here live. Another couple of things about this. We don't have to save the files. If you go up here into file, you'll notice there's no save option because we don't need to. Because as anything happens, it creates and adjusts the metadata automatically and um, saves that inside the catalog. So we don't have to ever hit the save button. Everything's saved. Everything's non-destructive. And here we go. We have three different versions of this image. And this has not added anything to the file size. Now, what if we wanted to export these, though, and actually turn them into real photos? Well, we can select all three of these. We can choose the file export. And then what happens is the export's going to pop up. And I really love this because we can actually choose different things that we want to do. We can choose where we want it to go. We can put it in a folder if we want. We can rename it. Uh, we can also work with video inside here of uh, inside of Lightroom. Uh, the other thing we can do too is we can go into file settings. We can choose different formats. We can just export an original file if we want without changing anything. JPEGs, PSDs, we can change the quality of these. Uh, we can resize them. Right now it's going to fit at 600. Maybe we want to make that a little bigger, 1600 maybe. And uh, we'll do the other one, 1600. In fact, I'll just put a one in front of there. 
So now that can be 1600 height and width, or we can do short edge, long edge. We can do it by megapixels, by size, all these different things. Uh, we can do output sharpening, which will just sharpen it nicely for different sizes when we output this, especially if we reduce the size, you'll want to do that. We can include metadata, uh, whatever metadata we want to apply on here. And here's the other thing too, we can do uh, watermarks. I've got all these different watermarks that I've created. And you can just hit the edit watermark in here. And uh, and this is where we can actually see the different types of watermarks here. So we can see, okay, there's a text watermark. That's what it looks like. We can tweak it. We can do different things to it. Change the opacity, the size, etc. Um, we've got graphic watermarks that we can create. I guess I don't have anything there. I would just choose an image, drop that in there. And, uh, you know, there's a different one. So we start to create all the different ones that we want. And then we just save those off as presets. And then when we're ready to export, we can choose the watermark that we want. So we don't have to create watermarks all the time. We can automatically do it. And then once we've finished exporting, there's a number of things we can do. So this seems like a lot of options and it could be a lot of work setting all these up. Well, fortunately, we can create presets, export presets. So once I've got everything that I want, I just simply hit add and we'll just, I'm just going to hit one because that's to save time. So if I want all these settings, I just hit one. If I want to do other things like, say, for example, photos to show, I like to export these and I put them on a folder. And in that folder, I can use for syncing with uh, different devices and stuff like that. So uh, that's actually how I like to work with that. And I know that I have a copy on my computer. I have a copy on my other computer. I can use Dropbox or whatever or Creative Cloud for syncing these photos to show. And I have all the settings that I want there. So I just simply click once for these presets and then hit export. And all these photos, these virtual copies will be turned into real photographs at that point. We can bring them back into Lightroom if we want or we can share them, email them, whatever. The other option is we can sync these with our mobile devices, and that's uh, another nice feature working inside of Lightroom. So as you can see, there's some really great advantages here, and one of them obviously is having all your photos in one place, being very quickly able to just select a photo, make an adjustment to it. We can make it right here if we wanted. We could sync those settings. You know, I can undo it. It's completely non-destructive. I can sync the settings with different photos. I can even use this little tool here to take our settings and apply the different settings. So that's the last preset we used. Notice I'm applying it to those photos just by simply clicking on it. If I want to undo it, just hit Control Z. Everything's non-destructive. Uh, and under the paint tool, we don't just do settings. We can also do all kinds of things, keywords, metadata, all that stuff. So we don't have to keep recreating it. As you can see, Lightroom is designed for working a lot of images and getting it done really quick. So there's other things that we could do in here when we're finished. If we want to find our images, we can click on the map. In the map um, option here, we can you know click on there and it will actually geotag all our different photos if we have any geotagging set and it will show where our photos are. And uh, we can set these to different locations so we can start to search by location. So let me just um, Scroll back up. I've got some. I didn't set any uh, preset locations there right now, but I'm working under my uh, collection. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you something. I'm going to go back here, back to my library panel, and under the library panel, I'm going to click on all photographs. Now I'm going to go back to the map. This might take a little while. Might slow things down a little bit, but um, well, here we go. It's loading up quickly, and we can see, hey, we've got photos in different locations. So if I want to see these locations, I can simply click on there and notice it opens those. I guess these were New York photos. And you can see these photos now have all been selected down there in that film strip based on that map. And so we can just go back to our library panel again. And now here's all our photos. We we're able to find those very, very quickly using the map. There's another thing we can do is a book. So let me just select a few photos here. And if I select book here, what it will actually do is we can build a photo book uh, based out of photos and we can take and click and drag these different photos in here and we can build a book. Uh, we can add as many pages as we want. We can choose the different types of books. We can do hardcover, softcover. We can do different types of paper here. You can export this out as a JPEG or a PDF and print it yourself as a PDF 
or you can actually have it sent to the blurb service and a book will actually show up on your doorstep with your photographs in there. There's a lot of different things we can do with the book. Slideshows. Slideshows are great. We can create slideshows here. So if you want to show multiple images, you can just click there and we can create these different types of slideshows. This is based out of four, so we can now go between them. You can do different things here. You can apply text and borders and style these in different ways. You can put identity plates in here so you can actually use watermarking on your uh, slideshows. And um, we can even go down, we can add music to them if we want to add music. Um, we can add audio, we can select music right from your iTunes library or from your desktop or wherever you have it saved on your computer. And, uh, and we can do all that kind of stuff. If I want to hit the preview here, we can see it'll just preview this, uh, this slideshow, which obviously right now it's only one selected. So let's grab a couple of images here. And so now we've got a few here. And we're actually going to have something to preview now because we've got more than one uh, photograph. So you can see, hey, this is what it's going to look like. You can manually advance through the, skull, uh, the slides by clicking there. You can hit the pause button if you want to pause it. And, uh, and then if you want, you can create this slideshow and it'll save it over here. And then we can reuse it uh, for different things. And you can see as our watermark up there. The other thing we can do is go to the print module. We can print images out of here or we can go to web and we can actually build web pages and websites out of these so we can do html and flash websites uh, using different types of presets so anyway as you can see there's a ton of different things that we can do here inside of lightroom that um, you just couldn't do using uh, camera raw and bridge in photoshop by itself or you couldn't necessarily do it as quickly and efficiently so here's just a just a few of the little things that you can do uh, one last thing that i just want to mention that i did not mention yet is you can actually work with third-party plugins in here too so if we go in and we grab a you know a photograph like maybe one of these images here and then we choose the photo option we choose edit in you know, we can edit in Photoshop, we can do all our HDRs, merge to HDR and all that kind of stuff. But we can also access third-party plugins in here. So, for example, I'm here and maybe I want to use Intensity Pro or, um, you know, I've got different ones here. I've got Nick software here. I've got uh, On One software here. I've got some Alien Skin stuff. I've got some stuff from MacFun. And as you can see, let's just click on that right now. And what it'll do is when we go to this option, it'll edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. We can choose what file format. Usually I do a PSD, Pro Photo RGB to give us the most amount of uh, color space. So we can uh, have more colors. And then we just hit edit. And then what it's going to do now is it's going to launch our plugin with that photograph. And it's going to take it in there. We can make these adjustments inside the third party plugin. As you see there, there's a plugin. It's, it's opening up right now. You know, we could do all our, you know, adjustments that we want to do. Uh, let's go into here, you know, just doing, you know, all just having fun here with our images. I'm not going to try and uh, and do anything really that make, makes much sense. I'm just kind of moving some sliders really just for fun. But you can see we can start to do, uh, you know, these, these adjustments here directly in there. And then we just simply hit apply. And that brings it right back in. I'm just going to hit cancel right now so we don't uh, adjust that image. And you can see that's a lot of the advantages we have of working here in Lightroom over just working in Camera Raw by itself.